Hi guys, welcome to Telecom Fact Channel. This is Salam Prasan Chandran. Today we are going to talk about LTE architecture, components and its functionality. So let me briefly explain about the contents. Modulation schemes. What is meaning by LTE? The components of LTE network, evolved packet core, mobility management NTD, serving gateway, packet data network gateway, home subscriber server, policy and charging pulse function and finally the call of node B. So what is meant by LTE? The long term evolution is a high speed data standard for mobile phones. Actually it is an upgraded version of GSM that is 2G and UMTS networks. Main concept is here to increase the capacity and speed by simplifying the core network and using different radio network interfaces. Actually, the third generation partnership project has developed the LTE standard in its release 8 document series. Release 9 and 10 and 11 brings new features such as carrier aggregation, enhanced downlink control channel and advanced multiple input multiple output techniques. Whereas release 12 delivered more enhancements such as FDD, TDD, carrier aggregation, massive multiple input and multiple output and enhanced small cells. LTE uses either frequency division duplex or time division duplex technology and methods. FDD uses separate frequency bands to transmit uplink and downlink data whereas TDD uses time slots on same frequency for both uplink and downlink. Actually, LT uses OFDM that is orthogonal frequency division multiplexing method. It does not support circuit switched method. It provides 100 Mbps while moving and 1 Gbps while stationary. The main advantages of LT networks are increased carrier capacity of subscribers high speed data rates, reliable connectivity, cost effectiveness. And these are the frequency bands is used across the globe. In our network we are using FDD 1800, FDD 1800 and FDD 2100 in mixed mode configuration. These are the band numbers start with 1 till 67. These are the frequencies are used across the globe. LT networks use bandwidth between 1.4 to 20 megahertz. As we discussed earlier, what are the modulation schemes are used in LTE network? LTE uses the following inner modulation schemes. For doubling, it is using QPSK, 16 QAM, 64 QAM and 256 QAM. Whereas for uplink, it uses QPSK, 16 QAM, 64 QAM it actually depends upon the user equipment. QAM is an abbreviation of quadrature amplitude modulation and QPSK is an abbreviation of quadrature phase shift gain modulation. A lower QAM is more robust against noise and interference while higher quadrature amplitude modulation offers a higher data rate in LD networks. Now we are going to talk about components of LTE network. A standard LTE architecture consists of evolved UMTS terrestrial radio access network and enhanced packet core that is EPC. 
the evolved universal terrestrial radio access network consists of following things that is user equipment e node b that is evolved node b whereas the evolved packet core consists of mobility management entity that is mme serving gateway packet data network gateway home subscriber server policy and charging rules function so what is the purpose and function of evolved packet core in the radio lte network the epc that is evolved packet core supports the following functions the functions are mobility management authentication quality of service routing upload and downloading ip packets and allocation of ip addresses actually there is a flat ip architecture that allows the network to handle the great number of data traffic in an efficient and cost effective manner so what is the purpose of mobility management entity that is mme it handles the all signaling exchanges between user equipment and evolved packet core and e node bs the signaling performed by mme is also known as non access signaling method and it is done through nas protocol the mme connect to e node b through s1 ap interfaces and perform the authentication activity moreover it connect to home subscriber server and request the authentication information for the subscriber who wants to connect to the network the main functions of mme are authentication enables user equipment to authenticate to network by exchanging the authentication information between the user equipment and home serving request mobility management it allows the subscriber mobility within the network or across the networks location update and handover support the mme is also responsible for allocation of gateway router to the internet if there are more available actually e node b itself has handover capabilities the mme transmits handover messages between the e node b when x2 interface is not available and it also provides the control plane functionality for mobility between lte and 2g 3g networks the serving gateway it act as a anchor for handover between the neighboring e node b's routes and routes all the user data packets it also handles the mobility between lte and other cs networks the serving gateway also performs a replication of user traffic in case of lawful interception the packet gateway that is packet data network gateway the packet data network gateway ensures the user equipment connectivity to external packet data networks that is just acting like a point of exit and entry of traffic for the user equipment the user equipment can connect to more one packet gateway while access multiple packet data networks the packet gateway handles policy enforcement user by user packet filtering charging support and lawful interruption and packet screening and also it supports mobility between third generation third generation partnership product and non 3g pp technology such as wimax and 3g pp2 home subscriber server The home subscriber server is a central database that contains user related and subscription related information and also it supports mobility management call and session establishment support use user authentication and access authentication activity also the home subscriber server is based on home location register and authentication center of 2g and 3g networks the pcrf that is policy and charging rules function 
the policy and charging rule function is a combination of charging rules function and policy decision function finally the role of e node b the e node b is a part of evolved umts terrestrial radio access network and it allows user equipment to connect to the lte network an e node b typically communicate with the user equipment and other e node b's the evolved packet core through various interfaces like uu interface x2 interface and s1 interface 2 the main functions of e node b are radio resource management porting of user plane packets towards serving gateway mme selection packet compression and ciphering message scheduling and transmission actually two logical interfaces are used in lte network user plane and control plane in user plane the application creates a data packet that are preceded by protocols such as tcp ip and udp whereas in control plane carries the network signaling messages thank you if you like the video please like subscribe and share it thank you